certainly there's some at mine. Nobody doubts she looks so fine. She's the best girl that I ever had. Sometimes she's gonna make me feel so sad. Na, 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 na. Just telling the guy in the car, I love Greece. Uh, I love, first of all, I'm Italian, so on a faccia una rasa, you know, we have face in, in race. We're very similar Mediterranean. And uh, I always love to come to Greece. I love the people, I love the country, it's so beautiful. Their food is amazing, and they still love music. And what I find more important than anything is after all of this uh, economic terrorism and everything that the governments have been doing and the World Banks, that the Greek people still live life, they really enjoy themselves, and they don't care about that stuff, you know, so much. I mean, they care, of course, but it doesn't affect their living. And I think this is so strong of them. It's wonderful f about these people. I'll tell you, they're still crazy. They're still great. One of the best rock audiences in the world, you know? Uh, I've been many, many places uh, through the years, and uh, somehow the Greek rock audience stays the same, you know, or, or grows or something, you know, it just, it doesn't die. When uh, Gene Simmons said rock is dead, well, it's not dead in Greece. So, that's all I can say. <laughs> oh, girl, and if it takes me a lifetime, I swear I'll tear down it. Love conquers all. First of all, I love playing acoustic. I started off with acoustic in, in small clubs. And uh, instead of bringing and touring with a whole band, electric this time, I thought maybe it would be a great idea to just scale it down, make it easy, and, um, you know, a couple of guitars. Sometimes we actually have a piano and a cajon and things like that, but tonight it'll be three guitars and, vo and voices, and it's a very intimate situation. And I like it a lot because I get to play uh, songs that influenced me as a kid. When I, was, when I was growing up, there were many, many artists that uh, influenced me. And tonight, I will not only do Rainbow and Purple, but I will do those songs that influenced me. I've been getting a lot of requests and a lot, of, a lot of negative feedback sometimes from people saying, oh, why don't you do your own solos? I'm, okay, here's the big thing. I plan to change the whole program. After I get off tour this year, I'm changing the whole program. I'm going all original. I'm going all my stuff. I don't even know if I'll play Rainbow or Purple. I don't think so. But people always want to hear I Surrender. You know, they always want to hear Can't Let You Go. They always want to hear Stone Cold, uh, Street of Dreams. So, I mean, you can't get away from it. And I think it's terrible when the artists have a hit with their songs and they refuse to play them. They get tired of it. Of course we get tired of it, but you must play it for the fans. They are the important ones. I'm, I'm currently writing for another project of mine that is pretty secret, and I can't divulge too much of this now. It's with a very famous Swedish producer, and it's gonna change my sound completely, which is really interesting to me because I believe that it's time for me to be born again, in a way. And I have so much material, so I've been busy writing with this producer and recording some things. Uh, we're nowhere near done, but uh, you know, we're in the beginning stages. Tell you something very interesting. First of all, the new sunstorm is called Edge of Tomorrow. I never thought we would do a fourth sunstorm. I thought we were going to do a trilogy. You know, three three records, done. But uh, Serafino from Frontiers approached me and said, "Look, let's do one more." So I said, "Okay." You know what? All right. 
I have Alessandro Del Vecchio, who is a good friend and great producer for Frontiers. I said, have Alessandro and the boys write the songs. I said, I will fix them as I always do. Change the lyric here, add a melody here, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I have full control over the material. So I chose all the songs personally. We threw about a dozen away and we kept, I think, 11. Now, we just did the first single video right here in Greece at Vikos Canyon near Ionina, which is the most beautiful place. And it is a spectacular video. I mean, this is beyond the, these little videos that come out nowadays. This is grand. It's huge. So I'm very proud that we did this, uh, this right here in Greece. Bands are like bad marriages sometimes. And uh, the egos fly and uh, people, you know, get full of themselves and everything happens. And uh, the guys are great guys. They're all still my friends, but um, it was getting out of control. And uh, I was getting very tired of the attitudes that I was hearing. I made everybody a full member and uh, maybe that was my mistake, uh, being a generous person but uh, because then I could have just said no, controlled it all. But everybody had a vote and the votes were getting crazy. So to make a long story short, I just said, look, I'm gonna drop out, okay? You guys want the project, you can keep the project, you can get another singer, whatever. But no promoter would have it. And uh, they tried Doogie, they tried Graham, but nobody wanted to buy it after that. So that says a lot for me. I think Doogie said it best to me. He said, you know, Joe, it's not Rainbow unless they do an album and a tour. And I said, I have to agree with you, Doogie, because that's, that's the truth, you know? Until you can write the songs, make some sense out of it all, do some greatness to earn the name Rainbow. Otherwise, our legacy, you know, uh, whether it's Ronnie, God bless him, or, or Graham, or myself, or even Doogie, our legacy, it comes down uh, in stature, you know, because then anybody could be in a rainbow like this, you know? So I don't agree with it. And I'll answer probably another question of yours right now. I wanted to, cre to create an authentic rainbow reunion. I was talking to Carol Stevens, the management, over a year and a few months, no kidding. Everyone called me delusional that Richie would rock again. Everyone called me this, that. I took a lot of crap in the press. Pretty sick of that, by the way, because you're a bunch of idiots if you don't realize that. And um, she didn't want to go along with a multi-million dollar deal that I had set up with UMG, Universal Mus Music Group, if you don't know who that is, uh, with um, Rockfield Media for an HD 3D DVD who just went to number one with the Axl Rose uh, Appetite for Democracy DVD. So it's great people, okay? We were gonna have repackaging of our, of our uh, box sets, et cetera. And I was talking to Rick Franks over at Live Nation and he wanted to put us on the biggest festivals going. And to my surprise, and to my shock, I found out he didn't want to do it. Why? Uh, I'll never know. Uh, I have my, uh, my suspicions. And I've read a lot of uh, fan comments on their suspicions, and some of them I think are correct. But uh, I really don't know why. It's a shame, because I believe the fans deserve it. I believe Rainbow deserves it. I wanted to do something like an extravaganza, you know, sing Dio, get Dio songs, Bonnet songs, you know, everybody. 
get Bob Daisley on bass, every, you know, and I talked to people and they were all into it. So I don't know, you know, it, it's, it's a shame really. song has such a deep meaning personally to me because this song um, was written literally in a dream. I wrote all the lyrics in, in a dream. I woke up three o'clock in the morning and I wrote it down in Copenhagen, Denmark, went back to sleep, woke up about uh, 11 or 12 in the afternoon for the recording session and I read it word for word. It was the exact same song I'm singing now. I showed Richie he loved it because it's about reincarnation. It's about knowing people before, spiritual. And uh, he came up with a great track. Got to give you credit for that one, Richie. And um, I remember even doing the solo. He came in to me and said, your vocal is so good that I'm having a hard time to finding where to do the solo. And I said, I opened up a couple of beers and I said, just relax, get in there and play melody as you always do. You're a fantastic guy with melody. And he played one of the most memorable solos I've ever heard Blackmore play. So I'd have to say that's my favorite song for a lot of reasons, personally and professionally. So here we are, uh, we came out with uh, Rescue, and um, Roy Thomas Baker produced it, huge producer, Foreigner, Journey, Cars, Queen, you know, everybody. Album still to this day fantastic. And I put together a super band. In fact, the band was basically the studio band, except for my good friend Barry Dunaway, who's playing with 38 Special now on bass. And Barry came in live though, and killed it. So here we are on tour, and I'm not sure if we were opening for someone that night, because if we were, they sure would have a hard time following us, because the crowd was mine. It was absolutely mine. Um, packed, and it was just wild enthusiasm, and the band played great. I mean, when you listen to this, there's no overdubs on this at all. Not vocally, not a guitar, nothing. Um, Cleopatra Records told me they, in, they were going to enhance certain things, but when I listened to the original uh, at home, can't enhance much. Everything is there. It was, in a, it was a, I forget the call stations for the FM station at the time, uh, the call letters, but uh, it was a, uh, how do you say, a live broadcast. And whoever was doing it, I, got, I have to find out and give him credit because he really mixed it well. And uh, that turned out to be this CD. And another good point of this is that Cleopatra had approached me because they wanted to kind of honor the artist. A lot of people bootleg these type of things and they make money and all this. And they said to me, look, Joe, it's been out for years. They go, it's not like you're gonna make all this money, but we can make it legal that this is yours, he said. And Cleopatra's into doing a series like that. Many other artists, they're doing the same thing. So I'm not the only one. And I think that's a, that's a great, a great idea and a great effort that, that they're doing. Because for us artists, this is our legacy. So I actually now legally own that particular recording. So uh, check it out because I think it's just excellent, really excellent. I think everybody has 
some regrets, you know, and would like to change things. But you really can't change the world, you know. You can't, you, and you can't change what happened when it happened. You know, my Electra deal it was something that was really disappointing because I had a great solo album. And what happened was, is I was supposed to have sequential albums. But um, I had an argument with uh, the president and I told him to go somewhere because he was really arrogant and uh, wanted me to do certain things that I just wouldn't do artistically. And I think I stuck by my guns and I'm very proud that I didn't fall under his bullshit. And um, I'm proud of myself to this day. I regret the fact that I had to lose time, you know, and creativity there. But I made it worth my while. So I'd have to say maybe that was a, a difficulty, but um, you know, I sleep at night. I have my pride and I'm doing very well. I have a great life. I'm very fortunate.